Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on your J Flight 224BH travel trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, leave plenty of room for that awning to come in and out. Once you run that out, you'll be able to see how much room you're going to need. Then on your off campsite, I want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your water is going to be right behind your rear tire on your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle, the campsites. And your power cord plugs in right at the rear of the unit. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive and unhook your hitch, first thing you can do is level your unit. Your unit does come with a power tongue jack. Got a night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply retract to lower, extend the raise. Get up off your hitch. Level your unit. Once you've got your unit level, next thing you do is stabilize it. Underneath this rubber stopper here is a manual override for this hand crank. If you lose power, you can get this up off your jack and get it hooked up. Speaking of power, check your battery post now and then. Make sure those have a wiggle loose as you're going down the road. Now, once our unit's level, next thing we're going to do is stabilize it. Three quarter inch hand cranks. You can use an impact driver or a drill gun, run these down in a matter of seconds. I recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot blacktop in the summer. Uh, better distribute the weight. Use your 10% off coupon, grab a four pack of those from the store, put them down, and run these down just until they're taut. Once you have any type of resistance on this, stop. Because remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. You just want to run these down until you got your unit stable. Get all four of them down, we can hook up our power and water. All the way on the rear of the unit, got this 30 foot, 30 amp cord. The way the new ones go on, they go on at an angle and then turn to the right. And then you put this black washer on to lock it. In your convenience pack will be a 30 to 110 adapter. If you need to plug this at home, it'll go on the other end of your cord. Once you get your power hooked up, let's hook up our water. Real easy on this J-Flight. Go to your city water connection. Grab your hose. But first, grab your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting fluid in here. Hook that up. Hook your hose up. But don't turn your hose on yet. Let's go to the rear of your unit again to your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point, folks, Making sure our drain plug's back in there. Get a little plumber's tape, put it around there. Get that on there nice and snug. Once that's on there nice and tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. Now, if that hose has been on for a little bit, go inside, open up your water taps. Once you got a steady flow of water going through all of them, shut them off, then you can turn this hot water heater on from indoors. Now, let's say we're gonna go camping and we're not gonna use city water. We're gonna go dry camping somewhere or boondocking they call it. In that case, we'll just fill up our potable water tank or our fresh water tank. Yours is located on the campsite above your tires. No need for a water pressure regulator here. Simply use a hose. Two ways to tell when it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right there or two on the inside where you check the levels of your battery. Black and gray tanks, there's also a fresh water button. Once that's full, go ahead and remove your hose. Put your cap back on. 
And then when you want to utilize your fresh water, you'll turn on your water pump indoors. Don't turn on your water pump when using city water. It's already pressurized and doesn't need it. All right, so we're all set up to camp with power and water. I'm going to walk around the rest of the outside of the unit, starting here on the campsite. The outdoor kitchen here with a fridge, sink. That will magnet up against the wall. Make sure you keep that locked. Your awning, we'll run that out in a moment. Outdoor speakers. This is a vent for your microwave. This is a flue for your furnace. Two things on this. One, make sure it's not blocked. And two, if you're running your furnace, steer clear that it will get warm. You also prep for a TV out here. Plug your TV in here, your cable here, and there's a backer in your bedroom. If you put that on a TV, you can bring that same TV out here and just snap it right on here. You have your fresh tank, low point drain for dumping that. Your hinged door, friction hinge so it stays closed. There's your pass through storage. Again, your battery post. Your propane does come with a cover and a regulator. Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. On the front, it'll be green when your gas is turned on. Again, your power tongue jack. Around the off camp side, your pass through storage again. Stabilizing jacks. So back here above where you hook up your city water, your 751 key will open this for a hot and cold shower. Black tank flush, we'll talk about that when we leave the campsite and dump our black and gray tanks. And there's your other low point drain. Here's where you hook up the cable at the campsite. Your spare tire with a cover. Again, power and hot water heater. You're also prepped for a Furion backup camera device you can purchase from our store that sits on the dash of your tow vehicle giving you a backup camera for this unit that about covers everything out here let's go take a look inside so coming up in the unit first thing i always like to point out is the fire extinguisher make sure that you and everyone is camp with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway immediately to the right of that is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector the reason i mentioned that's 12 volts always running off your battery so if you are out dry camping, nothing plugged in, charging your battery, disconnect your battery post if you're going to be gone for the day to keep this from running your battery down. One touch lighting up in here. Exterior and interior lighting. Here's your awning. Start to run that out. Show you that run working. Tight quarters here. I won't run it all the way out, but I want to tell you that the bottom is white, the top is gray. There's a white flap that's going to fall down. When that white flap falls down to 90 degrees, and you can see your brown bar underneath, that's as far as you want to run that out. This will run itself out beyond that and run itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure that uh, you don't run it out further than it needs to be. All right, so next to our awning control, Here's our checks, brand new battery, uh, fresh water tank. That's when I said you can hold down to tell when your potable water is full. Black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Here's where you turn on your water heater if hooked up to just gas. Your water heater if hooked up to electric. It does matter. Self-explanatory microwave. Below that, you do have a light and a fan above your cooktop. This glass top here makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light. Turn this to red to light. Hit your spark over here. That'll light your gas here. Same thing on the oven. Turn it to light. Spark it here. No need for a pilot light. And then just set it to the desired temperature. Rock your panel light down. It becomes an oven light. Below your oven is your access panel to your breaker box and fuses. A few 15s in there, a 30, a 40. Highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. Up here's your North Cold fridge. Hold this button, turn it on. Now, whatever's white is what you're controlling, and whatever the blue is on. So, for example, this is the freezer. This would be the fridge. The freezer, we like to keep it five. Fridge, you can bring that down to three. Save that in the fridge. 
and then we can move over to night mode. Night mode is just telling the fridge, hey, I'm not going to be opening and closing you as much. Save me some power. And it does. Bunk lighting. Uh, same thing back here with a 110 underneath it. Privacy curtains on both. Coming into your bathroom. In here you have a hand crank open. Power exhaust vent. A uh, little plumbing to maintain. It's all PEX now, but just keep an eye on it. Like I said, you're bouncing a house down the road. You want to maintain it as well as you would at home. You also have 110 with GFCI reset in here. Coming out into your living room. Here's where we turn your thermostat on. And let's turn the air on. There's your AC with quick dump. Now you notice when I shut the AC off, it will shut off rather quickly. However, when I turn on your furnace for your heat, you should kick on right up underneath there. There that goes. When you shut the heat off, the heat fan, the furnace fan, takes a few more minutes to cycle through before it shuts off. Storage underneath both seats. You can wiggle this top up, remove those legs, set that top right on these lips here, put your back cushions on top for another bed. IRV technology sound system. Go to FM here. See if we can pick up anything in here. Well, we'll listen to the static. So we shut it off indoors, have it on just outdoors, or shut it off out there, or turn on both. Bluetooth compatible, AM, FM, auxiliary, really nice sound system, which little it is. Cable hookup for TV. You can go 110 or 12 volt. This is the mount that I said you can put a little TV on in your bedroom. Snap that off and snap that outside if you don't want to miss the game. Here's where you're pre-wired for solar. That is a template telling the text where it's wired for solar already. If you ever decide to completely wire this unit for solar. One touch lighting on these. This blue accent light for up top. And of course, storage under your bed. Another one in there, and you should have a smoke alarm right there, and a privacy curtain for the bedroom. Well, that about covers everything inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite. So I do know a couple of the individual lights I can shut off by hand. But then what I like to do is go to my control panel here, shut off my interior lights. Then I can, for sure, know which lights I've left on. And I need to walk through and shut off by hand. Then I can turn back on my interior lights to say doors and drawers. Make sure all doors and drawers are secure and ready for travel. So another light. Shut off our interior lights and exit the unit. Now the biggest thing on these steps folks is you want to make sure this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this could catch on it when it comes up. See how close it comes? Set that in. Pull back on this and lock your steps in. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door. Lift and turn this handle. Your door is ready for travel. Now at this point, we'll bring up all of our stabilizing jacks. Unhook our power, our water, and our cable. If you are boondocking, come up underneath here and dump that low point drain. And if we are at a campsite, come back here, or our dump station here, and dump these low point drains. Once those are done, come back to your hot water heater. You're gonna lift up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna dump and render your hot water out of here. Push that back down, otherwise your door won't close. And then pull this drain plug. Use a socket, that way you're not getting water on you. 
hook up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, park accordingly. You got a 10 foot hose, comes your convenience pack, and your dump is immediately behind your rear tire on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Hook up your hose, put the other end in the dump, and the first thing we're gonna do is pull our black holding tank. Now that's gonna be our sewage. There's a couple ways to tell when this when that's done. You can listen or go inside and just open the door and turn the corner there and press your black tank button. Once that looks like it's empty, leave that handle open, grab the hose at the dump station, and go to your tank flush valve. Again, with your water pressure regulator, hook up the hose and let that water run for a good five minutes. It's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. Unhook that hose, make sure this is done draining. Then close your black handle and pull your gray handle. Now your gray handle is going to be cleaner water, so it's going to be your sinks and your showers. That's going to clean your sewage hose out for you. And you can conveniently and sanitarily store your sewage hose right in your bumper. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this J-Flight for many years to come. Happy camping!